Yes, there we are, live from Amsterdam. Welcome everybody. I see already we have a lot of viewers on both YouTube and Facebook. Share this feed. Very good. Please share this feed to your friends on Facebook and also on YouTube so more people can join. I'm also live on our Instagram account, um, but it's better to switch to YouTube right now. So YouTube slash RCO Brass. We are live there. And this is the first time we do it like this. If there's any problem with the sound or, or picture, please let us know. And if you have any question, post them down below here in the comments. So since most of us are sitting home, actually I think the last time I played in the orchestra was more than two weeks ago, I thought it would be a good idea to actually connect with my colleagues at home and give everybody the chance to hear from us, keep hearing from us and also ask questions and actually for me it's also nice to see my colleagues again. So Perry, the tuba player of the Concertgebouw Orchest, is actually waiting at home for us. So I'm gonna switch to him now. Perry! Martin! <laughs> <Okay. laughs> nice! Good to see you. So we will do this in English. Yes, of course. And um, I mean, if people want to ask questions in Dutch, obviously it's also possible. But um, let's let's do this mainly in English. So how are you doing? Yes. Well, you know, doing okay in these crazy times. No. <laughs> so yeah, it's crazy. So the kids are at home, so we have to, uh, you know, they have to do some homeschooling. And setting up, you know, the, the lessons with the students online was like a learning process for me as well. I saw you did the warming up with everybody together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was actually it was a breathing and, and buzzing class because we started at nine o'clock in the morning and not everybody can, can play at nine o'clock in the morning where, where they are locked in, so to say. Yeah. Uh, so that was fun. It was, gave great energy. And uh, yeah, it's cool to see the class as well, you know, see the guys. That's nice. I was just saying, like, before when I was alone, I think it's about two weeks ago that we played the last time together. Oh, man, it was the Tchaikovsky 6, right? Yeah, yeah that yeah. was nice. Man, this, it was so bad because, it, you know, we had so much fun, no, that, that Wednesday night. Yes. Where I remember we were pretty tired from all, doing all kinds of things, and then we went playing, and it was like, oh, man, it was so much fun. And I, like, the whole Thursday, the next Thursday, I was... So excited to do it again, and then uh, and then came the message like, no, you know, everything is cancelled. So. Yes, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, man. But we have to make the best of it. Yeah, we actually get trying. to develop all of these technical <laughs> things for once. <laughs> well, Martin, can I say, man, a, a big praise to you <laughs> with doing all this stuff and helping me also. It's it's amazing what you do. Well, so, let's uh, see. <laughs> for now, it's still <laughs> working. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. nice. So actually, you're yeah. sitting in your new studio at home, no? Yeah, yeah. So this is this is crazy because it's just coincidence. This is the the whole the whole building it was just finished like a couple of weeks ago. Um, so this was you know just perfect timing, and I just had to push through you know to arranging some things and getting a internet cable working and uh, you know getting it installed. But now it's now it's perfect use. And, uh, and I can play here like really, you know, in the middle of the night if I want, which is uh, it's fantastic. So, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I think actually in the meantime, a whole lot of people tuned in. So we are live on Facebook, YouTube <laughs> and Instagram. <laughs> that's great. So everybody watching, let us know from where you're watching. Make a comment in the comment section. That's nice for us to see from where you're all watching. So we will be talking about daily routine. So what you're doing actually during these times. And we thought it would be nice to focus also a little bit on breathing, right? Breathing exercises. So we will be doing that. And in the meantime, please post your questions. 
because we would be happy to answer them. <coughs> so, what have you been doing these days? Like, do you do your daily routine or do you practice etudes and scales and solo pieces? Like, what, without knowing when we will start playing again, what, what, what are the main exercises you do to keep your shape, let's say? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, I think what everybody recognizes uh, is like, you know, the motivation to really uh, perform can sometimes be a bit difficult because you, you never know when you're going to be on stage again. So, uh, so I really had to find it back. And then I thought like, well, what a luxury actually it is that, that we have, you know, even more time, like in our situation. So we don't have to worry about staying a bit fresh for the concerts. So I just take my, my normal daily routine exercises and sometimes go a bit more extreme and, uh, you know, and, and really uh, investigate again if I'm doing the things uh, how they are supposed to be done. And so really, you know, really uh, look back at, at myself and, and, and reevaluate all the things. Um, yeah, you know, so mainly for me, um, my buzzing routine and breathing routine uh, I use that to, to start up the day, but, you know, I think it's, uh, for me, it's very important to have a selection of kind of exercises uh, to, and to mix them. So I um, don't want to be too dogmatic about my, uh, my routine. So I, I change them so now and then. But, um, but let's say, you know, uh, I would like to start the day most of the time with, it, with a nice uh, slurring pattern kind of exercise maybe slowly demonstrate which is one uh, which is printed for instance in the brass team uh, book which everybody you know most of the players probably you know With an exercise like this, I really try to focus on, um, well, first of all, really that I have a nice controlled fat articulation. But then, of course, uh, I think on the tuba, it's extremely important to, to concentrate on your slurring. So, I'm really trying to make a super extra effort to really make it sound slurred, which is not so difficult. Probably to a non tuba player, this will not sound so slurred, uh, you know, to begin with, if I if I just play normal slurring. And I go... I don't think that will sound so slurred. So I'm really trying to, to put in an extra mental effort to make it sound more slurred. Uh, so that's, a, you know, in the, an exercise that I start off with. So basically you're very much focused on your sound and your breathing and, and, and sound imagination. Absolutely. So, you know, especially in the morning, you know, your embouchure might be feeling a bit stiff or, you know, depending on, on what you did the night or the day before. But for me, it's a challenge to really, to, to really not give in to, this, to how your embouchure feels and just, you know, try, start to, to control it from the brain. So you're singing voices in the lead. And then don't worry. And then, you know, with an exercise like this, you always encounter uh, uh, slurring keys that are a bit harder, all right? And then you try to really sing over it and don't worry so much about, about why it's difficult. Uh, but, you know, try to improve as, as you go along, you know, and, and then also in the lower register. Uh, because, of course, doing the same exercise in the, in the real super low register is challenging, of course. Nice. Yeah. In the meantime, I want to like it's incredible from where the people are watching. I see from USA, from Brazil, Belgium, yes. Spain, Thailand, Mexico. <laughs> of course, a lot of people from the Netherlands. Welcome, Alma. Yeah. Dominican Republic, uh, Lebanon, Italy, Japan, wow. Macedonia, um, Galicia. Oh, that's in Spain. <laughs> 
<laughs> All over the world, great. And again, for everybody watching, post your comments in the YouTube comment section or on the Facebook comment section. That's great. This is fun. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear you play again. Oh man, I miss your sound too. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little surprise just to give us a little memory of how it was to play in the orchestra again. Just one second. <laughs> nice. Let's hope it doesn't take too long before we sit there again. Wow, nice. I suggest we do this the whole month of June. Just this symphony. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, like yeah. we said before, we would like to focus a little bit on breathing today, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, we prepared some nice quotes and exercises. So, I would suggest maybe we start with that and I see a lot of questions coming in. Yeah. So we make sure to make enough time for that as well. Well, you know, I can, I can speak a bit about it, and if you want to interrupt me, then you know, just just go ahead, right? Great, great, great. That's yeah. nice. So, yeah. Yeah. like, we speak a lot about breathing, of course, but in which way do you um, make the breathing or breathing exercises a part of your daily routine? And what what would you teach to students who struggle with with breathing and especially of course on tuba and I mean on every brass instrument obviously yeah. so do you have a certain set of exercises or tips or things you think of well if we start at the beginning you know it's first of all it's it, it's it's a little different philosophy which came from uh, from the teaching of Arnold Jacobs and mainly it was instructed to me by Rex Martin uh, which I thank him still very much because, you know, when I uh, started having lessons with him, uh, it totally changed my concept of breathing, but it totally changed my concept of playing and, and making making a sound. And um, before we, we start uh, talking about uh, breathing, because uh, there's a really nice quote, and I think you have it ready by, by Arnold Jacobs, which the statement is, you can breathe with absolute perfection and be a lousy brass player. And that's that's so true, you know. So you can you can focus so much on your breathing. There it is. <laughs> and that's, that's well done. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, Did you see the transition? <laughs> oh, Martin, that's great. Oh, look at the picture. That's fantastic. Oh, but it's, you know, it's so true. And actually, can, you, can you explain a little bit what you... Uh, what for you is the meaning of this 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 um, this sentence? Yeah, you know, actually, when I was well, before I went to have lessons with Chicago, I did breathing exercise, but very much in a physical way. So I really used a lot of muscle, and then so I did that, and then I totally disconnected the breathing exercise from from making music and and make it make it work for your sound. Yeah, so. It's extremely important to think about that, you know, what it is that you're practicing. And, um, you know, and you, what do you need to have in mind that, like me and most of my teachers and a lot of colleagues, we can talk for hours uh, on breathing, right? Um, but we need to keep in mind that the goal is that we should bring back the breathing, back to a, to a very simple action, which is controlled by the brain, uh, and it's you know, and it's connected to uh, to the music that you're about to perform. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. You know, breathing is not just uh, uh, like filling up the tank and then you start playing. Yeah. So it's it's always connected to the sound that you're going to make and the music that you're going to play. So I think that's that's extremely important with understanding uh, how to how to improve on breathing. Um, and then you know. 
the next important thing that I would like to say to understand about breathing before we, we go into any exercise which I can demonstrate is understanding that we actually have two different ways of, uh, of, of, of breathing, so to say. So first of all, we can, we can suck in the air with the throat, right? Which we normally do, uh, which is our, our uh, reflex breath. Yeah? So like this. But you already understand, most of you, like taking a four or five liter breath uh, just like this is not natural. Huh? So there are a couple of problems arising when you take a throat breath, which the first one is when you take a, a, a large breath, which you think is a large breath, you're probably your throat will close very, very easily, right? Um, yeah, so, you know, the question is, uh, the, the other way of, of breathing is actually sucking the air in with the lips, right? Which is going to be like, like this, yeah? And there's something very interesting about this. If you, if you feel, I'll stand up a bit. If you feel here in your, in, your, in your breathing motion, if you suck in the air with the throat, move back a little bit, like this. Yeah, with the throat, you actually need these muscles to, to pull and push the air. Now, if you move the air here at the lips, so you suck in the air with the lips, and then you blow from the lips, I will go sideways, which I'm sorry, I just ate too much of it, but you can see actually how this whole breathing system just, just uh, uh, is not, these muscles, you don't have to really use them uh, consciously anymore. And one of the, the sentences that Rex Martin told me, which I will never forget, is that actually below your chin, you are just a stupid breathing bag, which is so completely true, right? So here you focus the intake and the blowing, but you know here you just like a bag. So of course your posture needs to be right, you need to sit straight or stand straight, yeah. But all all control is here at the lips. All right. So that's that's for some people really a bit different. Now um, there are some advantages, you know, and of course we only have a short amount of time today, but this is you know I'm giving it kind of compact. But if you look at my embouchure, for instance, when I take the, the suction breath in and then moving into blowing out, I hope you can see it. So this is in. Now we'll add a little bit of articulation. You can see that actually my embouchure, just the shape just stays the same. So for most tuba players, they have uh, problems with articulation because, you know, with the, with the throat breath, what happens is, first of all, the embouchure is much wider, and then we need to be back, back into the shape of low playing again, right? So when we don't hit the core in, on a low F, for me, that's, a, that's like a kicks too, right? Missing a note. So if you experiment a little, little bit with this, you will notice that your articulations start to become much more precise and clear. Martin, are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I'm checking all the comments and, and questions. Yeah. No, no, I was, uh, and at the same time, enjoying your story. If it's boring, then let me know. <laughs> no, 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 it's not at all. Not at all. Not at all. No, I was looking how many people were watching. I think it's about. 300 on all the platforms oh. together so did you ever did you ever give a masterclass to 300 people at the same time <laughs> no, never. no but you know so you know so when i come back to what we're talking about which is for me what's what is the biggest change is is that you don't control your breathing uh physically you know so you're thinking about a specific muscle part or or body type or or you know people always talk about low or high breathing and and the uh you know how what muscle is in control, but if you just focus on the on the sound, right? So uh, you mean focus on the sound in your mouth? Ex exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So when I do breathing exercises, um, uh, and you know you can take you could take any kind of pattern uh, rhythmically, and I think you have some ready, which is the Charlie Vernon uh, exercises. Yes, there it comes. Add them in. 
Oh man, fantastic. So maybe maybe it's a good idea to um, have the people join at home. Yeah, let's do this. So I will put up the 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 the, the music. Yeah. And then maybe you can do the the exercise together. So everybody at home, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> right. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So before we start, uh, I think it's extremely important to to understand uh, uh, that we're focusing now on on, on three things. Right. <clears throat> First of all, we focus on where is the airflow. Right. Is it here at the lips or is it throat? That's something that you can you can judge. Uh, the second one is also important. What is the color of the flow? So is it is it high pitched or cold, or is it or is it warm and dark, right? And then the third one that you can focus on at the same time is what is the shape of the breath. So most people always go like, for instance, with the first exercise, we go. And then we're already full, or maybe we do, which, you know, and then the shape of the airflow is like, is like a diminuendo, yeah? So what we try to focus on with the very first exercise, which I call slow motion exercise, yeah? It's a four beat in, four beat out exercise. We're trying to, to really uh, listen to, to these three things that I just said. So place, color, and shape. That's extremely important. So I would just... I would just give one, two, three, four, and then we start together. And I will, I will use my hands to show if we are in or out. Let's try this. See, see how this works. Let's go back to the camera a bit. There we go. Yes. So we have one, two, three, four, and. Let's do a repeat and <clears throat> and then we stop. So it's very important actually when you do these breathing exercises to have a little bit of water around. Mm. Yeah, let's do it like this. Yeah. So I hope you were able to 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 already monitor this, and 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 maybe you were so focused on, you know, listening to your breathing, that you you totally forgot what is going on here. That's actually what it's supposed to be. So make sure your posture is you're tall, all right. And uh, and one tip of advice for those that have difficulties of finding the difference between the suction breath with the lips and the the throat breath you know if you take if you take your hand your fingers and you just suck the air past the hand you will notice you get a little bit more more uh, uh, amplified uh, suction sound right so it's interesting if you have this sound if you compare it with the open sound it will be so it's pretty warm and actually, uh, one of my, my great friends and colleagues, Stephen Mead, suggests that you will do, do the same with blowing out. So you really blow against the hand as well. Which is a bit helpful for, for focusing where the air is. Okay? So, I hope still everybody is standing straight. Uh, let's just do the next exercise. All right? There we go. As you can see, we're shorting it down uh, to, to one beat. Now, when we go to the one beat in and out exercise, you know, try to have the same warmth of, of, of color of breathing as you did before. So don't get stressed because it's, it's a big one, right? But just, just stay relaxed and focus. Keep your focus on, on how the flow sounds. There we go. One, two, three, four, and...
like this. Very good. Okay. So extremely important is that you have your your concentration at the moment where the the air changes, right? So you should really avoid a lock in. Huh? So you are too full, and then automatically the throat just closes, and then to blow out you have to first release the air. Okay, good. So uh, well, these are you know these exercises by Charles Vernon Arch are you know are very helpful, especially also when you see number number five and six, which actually is my next suggestion to have these breathing exercises. Uh, you make them connect to you know to a bit more uh, musical pattern, right? So in, in this case, we just have triplets going. Yeah, so you use articulation a little bit, right? So then you can actually move uh, the breathing exercises, which for me is extremely important. You connect them to a, to your musical idea. So for instance, if you take the rhythmical pattern of Ride of the Valkyries, which is And then if you then, you know, transfer this to the instrument, hopefully it will work. <laughs> Bravo, I missed that fat sound. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, cool. That's great. You want to continue to the to the exercise? Uh, no, I think that's fine because okay. you know it, the, the exercise by Charlie Byrne are just uh, you know like an example. So I think it's extremely important to to be creative and, and design your own breathing exercises that you would like. You know, uh, a small breathing exercise that's not really printed, which which I really like, uh, is is this one. Uh, I, definitely, this one comes from Rex Martin, which I think has a name. I, th I think he, I think he just tuned in on YouTube actually. Yeah. Oh, Rex! <laughs> <laughs> I hope I say the right things. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this this exercise is really nice, where you you know you start. This is not you're not focusing so much about if you have a full breath or no, but it's about it's about the speed of of moving the air back and forth uh, here at the lips, which is goes like this. Right? And you try to do it super super fast. And as you will notice, if you try to do this with the throat, that's almost impossible. And actually all your muscles will will tend up, right? And um, of course, you know, with this with this different way of breathing, you uh, everybody needs to discover what what it, what the advantages are to themselves. But for me, the main goal is, you know, to have this have my breathing system as relaxed as I possibly can to do the extreme things that, that we need to do sometimes. Okay. Yeah, that's nicely said. And how do you think about the timing of the breathing? Like, do you adjust your the timing of your breathing to the music you're playing or you of course of course when you're in the middle of the phrase you have sometimes no time at all to breathe but when yeah. starting the phrase do you really connect the timing of the breathing to the to the to the tempo of the music absolutely definitely yeah so for yeah. example the the the, uh, the the excerpt that you just played the the wagner yeah so you prepare mentally uh, the tempo and how exactly. can you can you show how you would breathe then in terms of tempo? You mean as the breathing exercises, right? Yeah. So how is your first breath starting the excerpt? Because I find that many students are often struggling uh, with with 
starting an excerpt directly in the right way, in the right tempo. And I, oft I find that it often has to do with, uh, with the timing of the breathing. Yeah. Well, first of all, it starts with you know, having, having the trust that, uh, uh, that you get quantity with, with a very short breath, right? And that's you need to practice. So if I go just do this, uh, which I have, I have the breathing back, back, back lying around, you know, you actually see that just a, that's a quick one. It's actually quite a lot of air. But first of all, you need to establish this trust that it isn't a lot of air. And, you know, Martin, it's actually a super good question. Because beforehand, when I, you know, when I was a student, I, I would do the right to do work. It was so imprinted in my brain that I needed a huge amount of air. You know, to have to have the first line uh, divided properly, and actually, what I would do was go uh, just just take two extra breaths, you know, to to fill up completely. Yeah. And actually, uh, this was a bit too well done, but uh, <laughs> something like this, right? And I see many students do that sometimes. So you, you either take two extras or one extra, but now. When you practice these breathing exercises and you have you build trust that with only with that you can do the whole line, it's just breathe, pam pam, pam pam, right? And then the breath is really timed to the first note. Actually, I think uh, actually, this is a very good question. I think it's extremely important. Even you know, I see sometimes with my own students that we're so focused on the technique of doing it right to to take a breath, and then we forget to connect to it is what we're going to do. Yes. Yeah, I, I found at one point it helped me really a lot to make the breathing a part of the music. Exactly. Not to see it separately, like first there's a breathing and then you start making music. So yeah. the breathing is, is really connected to what you're doing after. So, for example, if you would play the, um, the excerpt of, let's say, Prokofiev 5. Yeah. You would breathe much slower, for example, or uh, another yeah. slow excerpt, let's say. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so, so I with the Prokofiev five, I really try to have in mind the beginning of the symphonies, you know, to 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 have the right timing. So re uh, really like connected to the music. Really connected to the music, but I think this can you can only do this when you have trust that this 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 relaxed breathings are actually enough air, you know. And and with relaxed breathings, of course, when when we blow out, yeah. Often, especially with long phrases, and I can imagine, especially on tuba, of yeah. course, of course, you build up some tension while breathing out because you use the muscles in your body to actually get the air out. So. In terms of relaxation, it's it's really important with the breathing in, right? To not keep the tension, actually. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, I practice a lot also of exercise where I'm, I'm very much aware uh, when I'm nearing the point of equilibrium in my breathing, which for people that, you know, equilibrium is, is where we are now when, when we speak, no? So if I would start the Prokofiev 5 first line, Right, I would go. I would go pretty easily to my to my max, which is you know I'm I don't have an extreme uh, a long capacity like four or five maybe you know, but then I go. And now I'm I'm now I'm right at the point of equilibrium, and as you know I really try to to divide my air. So when I go past that point. You can easily hear that my air moves up and, and these muscles start moving inward. Yeah. Right? So, you, so you actually avoid to come to that point as much as you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, that's a, that's a great point. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. But if you realize that on the positive side, if you breathe well, you have, you have four or five liter breath, yeah. which, which is good for, for most tuba players. 
well, bass trombone, that's that's an air sucker too, no? So <laughs> yeah, it is. You need a lot of air there too, but it's extremely important because if you go past equilibrium, like you, you can sense these muscles go inward, first of all, then you need to release, and then you need to start breathing back in, which probably it makes it prob probable <clears throat> that you will not fill up to the same point again. Yeah. So you're getting into this kind of negative uh, spiral of, of, of breathing. I think everybody recognizes this with with ongoing lines and then yeah. in case it happens because you have no time to breathe or maybe your lung capacity is a bit smaller then i find it's extremely important to to focus on the relaxation with the breathing in if you get past this you yeah know, because it happens sometimes of course in concerts suddenly you play much louder than in the rehearsals or um, you have a jet lag and you just have <laughs> issues breathing or or you're in a higher altitude place or whatever so it, it can happen that suddenly you get past this this feeling all the time yeah. the equilibrium that's nicely said <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but th then it's important to really get rid of all the tension that you build up with the breathing in right yeah 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 that's right that's nice yeah. and um as you said like the, these emergency breaths you know these these, these quick ones or, or when you really so it's extreme. I think everybody recognizes, you know, like when you, if you're a swimmer, if you swim in the water, like what what the body does when you when you arise, you go. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Okay. And there's your throat breath. So this is, you will have the same kind of effect when you are a bit in trouble playing, you know. So, but then I think the the, the only way to control your breath better and not and not having this this reflex breath or I actually call it stress breath. Because you know to, to, to put a negative kind of uh, connotation to that breath, right? So it, for me, that's a stress breath. Yeah. Yeah. So when I when I when I know I can sense I get in trouble with breathing, then my focus even goes higher to having having the the, the breath controlled with my ears. So having this this warm suction breath. Okay. That's but nice. That, that that will save me probably many times. Yeah. Great. Let's go to some questions. Actually, I think now altogether we have more than 400 people watching. <laughs> so that's, that's great. I see a lot of people from all over the world. South Korea, Costa Rica, Mexico, Thailand, United States. A lot great. from the Netherlands also. That's great. That's nice. Let's, let's, let's answer some questions. So everybody who is watching, post your questions either on YouTube chat or in Facebook chat and we will go through them and answer them as good as possible so hey, actually we should try some playing together <laughs> let's see if that works <laughs> after <laughs> <laughs> let's try let's try so the people have some time to post their questions I, I have no idea if the two sounds can go together but we could try <laughs> I mean what should we do like the Roshu one yeah I'm not set up in terms of sound, but let's see. Or we could play the the Wagner. No, that's <laughs> for sure that won't be together. <laughs> let's do the the Roshi number okay. two. Yeah. One, two, three, one. <laughs> <laughs> Doppler yeah. effect. I think the the two sounds don't mix also. I think like by next year, by now, you know, then I think the technique will will be uh, ready that we can play together. It should be possible. I will find a way. <laughs> yeah, this is what I noticed with with the students doing the things via Zoom or something. That the playing together that's that's a challenge still. You know? Yes, yes, yes. But I think I can add some delays and stuff like this. Let me take a look. Fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we made this happen too, so it should be possible. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me see some questions here. All right. Oh, yeah, this is an interesting one. So, are there particular vowel syllabus that you use for breathing, like a, o, or u, or u? Um, well, that's a very good question. Uh, mainly f for tuba playing, I focus on an o vowel. You know, and with breathing in, 
yeah, and for me, interesting what I say, it, you know, I, I, I will never forget, I, it's imprinted in my, in my brain, is the American woe. Uh, if you say woe, like Rex Martin says it, it's, it's just beautiful. But if you do this woe, bang, then, then the amateur is ready to, to have this really warm suction. So either you focus on this vowel, right? Or you just, or just, if I, you know, maybe I do it in a microphone, I go close to the microphone and have this warm suction. Maybe you hear it. <laughs> Could you hear it, Martin, or not? <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to hear it, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're throw, thrown out by YouTube doing this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so it's it's either the vowel or it's focused on the color of, 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 the, uh, uh, of the flow. Okay. Right? Um, I, I witnessed an interesting day of teaching with uh, Christian Stenstra, right? A very nice brass coach as well, which actually he kind of, uh, he speaks in the same, uh, same language, if I say, but then he translates the color of the flows to, to your instrument, right? So, well, this is tuba, really nice dark color, and he says trombone, still warm, higher pitch, euphonium probably as well, then going to horn, a bit higher up and, and so on. And he's a trumpet player, so he uses this kind of a bit higher pitched, but still the air is controlled here. Okay. And and talking about vowels, yeah. I remember we talked about that just between the two of us a while ago, but do you think different vowels in uh, middle, high and low register in terms of playing? Do you think ta-ta-ta or tu 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 or ti ti ti? No, actually, I always. Or do 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 I will actually, I will keep it the same everywhere, you know. And actually, so now no, you come no matter with, which register, you always have the same vowel in your head. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, it's the pitch for me that changes, but the vowel stays the same. Yeah. And this, you know, for instance, if I do buzzing exercises uh, where I, I want to connect my different embouchure shapes through the register, right? <laughs> If I go, I think I think it was a could have been a pedal C. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> sure. So when I go from this pedal C to the low C, I sing do. So sing the piece under, but I keep the O shape the same. Then to the higher octave. And ever higher. So for me, the the vowel is is, is constant. Okay. But it's you know it's interesting that just it's it's not that you you know if I speak about an O shape doesn't mean your embouchure is always going to look like an O, right? It's it's just the mental input that will control the embouchure, and you will have different kinds of of embouchure shapes, but you don't notice it so much. Okay. And in terms of, uh, that's a question I saw also coming by a couple of times. In yeah. terms of tongue placement. Yeah. So um, you, you say you think ta 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 or da 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 probably. Da, yeah. And uh, da da da. And when you play high, is your tongue on a different position than when you play, let's say, in the, in the low pedal register? Well, you know, if you really uh, 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 try to. To, to work on, on your playing in the philosophy of Arnold Jacobs, you will never ever uh, uh, think of, of, of you know, positions of the tongue. You will just sing the vowel that you want to use. So either, either da or a very ta, an active D, or maybe ta, and you really don't have to think uh, about where your tongue is, right? And if, you, if you go higher, if you ta, automatically the tongue will 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 do what it needs needs to do. So I think that's a much more healthy approach to to controlling your articulations. So right? it's it's important to connect to the natural as much as possible. So the, to the natural speech. Exactly, exactly. And this, uh, you know, uh, to be honest, and I can share it. I don't mind sharing this with people. This is one exactly one of the reasons why I went to see uh, uh, Rex Martin for lessons because I was so focused on on my tonguing and on my tongue placement and how I should do this, 
that at some point my tongue became actually a, a, a blockage, right? So it really lo uh, was locking in in, in, my, uh, in my mouth, either here through the lips or even you know, behind the teeth because I was over-focused on, on, on the physical thing. So, so therefore, I always think, you know, and even, even uh, the interesting thing, if I, if I go a bit lower, if I take my instrument and I go, just a second. The low register. I'm not even sure, you know, if I'm using my tongue, yes or no. So, for instance, this, these two notes I play with tongue, and now, I play the same two notes without my tongue in, but just the air movement. Like, like this. Which is a bit, it's a bit harder for me, you know, because I really need to focus on, on uh, singing with an H starting. It's really difficult to have to have the core of the sound right, but it's a very good exercise, by the way. As you can hear, there's almost already so much attack in the nose by itself. So then I just add a little bit of tonguing, like either D, you know. And then, then you have to pitch. So I just make the tongue do what it does uh, when I when I speak, which is actually not so much normally in, in, in singing or, or speaking. So actually, the, the things we talked about now in terms of articulation and breathing, your goal is in, in, in with the both things, both issues to make it as natural as possible. Absolutely, yeah. So I always, I would go from the, from the singing part of the brain, you know, either singing or speaking. But I, and this, this is actually, it, uh, I can relate this to almost everything. So also when I slur, you know, when I do slurring exercise, I, actually, I do a lot of uh, uh, exercise from the violin, lip flexibility book. Actually, actually, I got a question about that. I just, I just saw. So okay. someone asked, when you do big slurs, like more than a fifth or a fifth or more, yeah, going from low to high, how do you make sure that both notes have the same quality? Yeah, very good question. Well, this is ex exactly what we're talking about. So. Uh, in, the, in the violin, there's fast slurring, uh, uh, lift flexibility exercise, but also slow ones. But let, let's just take a... So I think something very interesting, when I do this exercise, I try to focus on uh, what I call a horizontal airflow. So my airflow goes... So it's, you know, it's really like fuel, right? So I'm not doing, I hope you can hear it in the microphone. So I'm really speeding up. Because I think this is what will happen. You get these bumps, right? And I think especially on tuba, this may be the hardest thing to do, you know? And, and if you, maybe, I don't know if you can see it. If you, if you go, if you slur to the next one, you see that this muscle just kicks in. Right? But if you if you really focus on this horizontal flow, then this muscle doesn't kick in. And I think this is extremely important uh, to practice and would be super helpful. So so I, I start with these violins as very slow exercises also together with the class and then only when you are in control of, of, of your flow, basically. You think that helps, Martin? Yes, that's great. That's nice. Yeah. I had another question about, um, because you say you you make mouthpiece buzzing a part of your routine, right? Yeah, well, you know, normally, uh, my normal life is I, I wake up, you know, at 6.30 in the oh morning. Yeah, that's a nice, <laughs> that's a nice story. <laughs> and at 7, I am in the car, right? And that's my that's the beginning of the day. So so I have, have some kind of drone in the car. Uh, I mean drone if pitch, and I do my buzzing exercise in the car. So you know, well, 
uh, as you know, there, there, there's always discussion if buzzing is good yet or not, right? Uh, well, you know, we have both good practice places, but I think, especially these days, I don't think, you know, we, we yeah, well, I think you have to buzz if you cannot practice all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, it is very extremely important when you do buzzing exercises that you are aware that you're actually not judging uh, the sound that comes out of the mouthpiece because there's not really anything to judge, you know, there's no, there's no real quality or sound or people go like, oh, the, the quality of the buzzing is improving. I, I don't know. Buzzing is extremely important to, to go to the brain and, and you know, and, and, and because we don't have to have so much overtones in the, uh, in the lead pipe of the mouthpiece, so it's easier especially for, for valve instruments, so that we can practice glissando um, uh, kind of exercises, right? So, so when, you, when you practice the mouthpiece buzzing, you always yes. do the, the exercises in glissando? Uh, well, not always, but, but there, there are some really, like this octave, octave glissando one is for me, it's a very good one, right? Because this, I think this brings micro intonation to your ambitious complexity. Yeah. You know, I sometimes say, funny enough, you know, we, we two players, we, we have a bit more, uh, we need to be more flexible ambitious than trombone players. <laughs> because we, we need to be able to, to play outside of, of the core of the instrument, which there's no two, but it's perfect, right? So we need to be able to go higher or a bit lower and still have a very good sound. But it means you're actually blown against some kind of resistance of the instrument, right? Yeah. Because you're not in the core. So you guys just move the slide and then you're, you still have your kind of open open core, right? In okay. a way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good to, it's good for, for most students to, to understand that that's, it's, it's a bit different and we, we need this, this flexibility. Uh, this is a bit more what I call flexibility yeah. of this slope. So we, for instance, we do a, 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 like a, a daily exercise with the class. This is one that I do in the car. And sometimes I have to, have to watch out a little bit because it, really, it's, it takes a lot of air. Which it's in the brass gym book, uh, and we start on uh, on low F, and you go. And so on, so on, you finish that one, and then you go to doing this in E, then you go one step up G, then you go to low E flat, and then you build up until until you have reached uh, the pedal C1, <laughs> which can be tricky sometimes with, you know, with getting a bit dizzy or something. So you have to, but do, it, you have to do it sitting down? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes, yes, you know, if I'm a bit hungry. Yeah. But and extremely important, is ex yeah, sorry. No, no, no. Like, would you connect this exercise? Of course, when you're driving in the car, you don't have your tuba there, but when you are at home, do you connect these exercises also with playing the same exercises on tuba? Yes, definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and this brings us actually to the point, because sometimes for people uh, are buzzing the mouthpiece and playing the tuba, they say, well, I use different embouchure. And I see this happening, actually, especially in the low register on tuba. People actually, uh, if I go back to my F, uh, which is low F, most sometimes people go, which is a, it, it's still an F, a low F, but it's outside of the mouthpiece, right? It's in front of the mouthpiece. So, and it should be, it should be in it. And with the same, the same ambassador um, uh, as you would play on the tuba. So for me, for me, this is the same. But you can only control this uh, when you trust Again, your singing voice that's leading. So either on, on the mouthpiece or the tuba, I think very active singing uh, of pitch and and vowel, like this. Yeah, like, okay. Like you said, there is always a lot of discussion about is mouthpiece playing good? Is it the same? Like, obviously, it's not the same. But yeah, it's like also in the way you explain it, I find it it's it's a very good tool. Yeah, it's a good tool to check what. 
vibration and intonation you're actually making with your embouchure, right? Exactly. And also, as you said, like it's 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 good to practice the efficiency of your of your buzz of your buzzing. Yeah, yeah. And I also like yeah. to do it as a warming up. I think it's important for for myself. I always do it in in glissando and not too loud because I find when you yeah. when you when you do the mouthpiece buzzing too loud. Yeah, your amateur gets tired and 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 how do you say tensed very quickly, right? Yeah, but and, but you know, like, you understand that if you if you buzz a dynamic like this on on the mouthpiece, <coughs> this is extremely loud on the instrument, right? That's something that we try to forget. Martin, you just you're gone. I think your camera just uh, oh yes, finished. <laughs> <laughs> you go in black. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a blow there. <laughs> so you you have a very good point to to not to not burst too loud. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and just put the, the extra air that you have, you put it in, in into the you know either the, the glissando kind of exercise or uh, if you do a bit more slurring exercise, that you know you put it in, right? Yeah, that's nice. So I like actually the, the, the thing that you do with the uh, what's the Thompson right with the with the uh, yes the, the, the drum the buzzing basics the buzzing basics yeah. yes no yes. it's it's important like like you say when you are in the car you have a drone but yeah. that's to make sure that you when when you're buzzing you actually buzz the right intonation right exactly so yes. it's it's not about just making your lips vibrate but it's making your lips vibrate in the right intonation. The right intonation. So it's, exactly. it's important when when people do buzzing exercises to always either have a drone or something yeah. recorded in their telephone. I mean, nowadays in the telephone you can even download apps with which you can play piano, right? So, yeah. So a digital piano or like a, a real piano. It's it's important to always have a reference of intonation when you're buzzing. Yeah. And there there's some other. Uh, so you have the, the Thompson book, which is really. Really cool, and uh, yeah. we discussed it some uh, weeks ago. Uh, you you use the B flat one. I, I if somebody somebody can send me the the, the C major, I would like to <laughs> see that. That would be helpful. Uh, other tools that that I use is the tuning CD actually, which is a very cool tool. Okay. Which kind of gives uh, gives kind of the relative pitches to to all the chromatic notes in a in a tone uh, um, base, so to say. So you can have all twelve uh, keys. Which is good, and another one which has a bit more friendly sound is the cello drums. Uh, I think the, uh, both of them are. I think that you can find them on Spotify available. So uh, that's really cool tools to use. You know, uh, same for you uh, uh, on tour, right? Yeah. When you're touring, I use it in, in the hotel room uh, in the morning, or, or you know. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. Very cool tools. Let, let's go back to some questions. And yeah. again, if people have questions, post them down below, either in Facebook or in or in YouTube, or it's in the right or left side. I don't actually know where it is. <laughs> Somewhere yeah. around there. So I had a question about uh, low range. So yes. what kind of exercises do you do to, of course, improve low range with, with students and to maintain your own low range and connect the very low range to the to the pedal register. Let's say, are there? Can you show us some exercises? Well, it's actually the, the, the exercise that we just did is, is one of my main exercises. So this low buzzing exercise. But I think, uh, well, you know, uh, first of all, I think if you have a have a, a, a pattern of exercises, um, well, you, if you have it just a, a normal drum like this one from the brass tin book, is a. This is easy for me, no? Like starting on C, just going to low D. But I really focus on my singing voice in my brain, so I don't worry so much about uh, I have to move down to this G. But I, I really try to sing in my brain. So I really try to sing the connections. And then I try to copy this down. Now, when you get a bit lower, uh, probably what you will notice is uh, you will get uh, signals from the brain like, oh, this is difficult, now you get in trouble. And you will not tr trust in yourself that you can slur 
equally easy to a, to a PLC, for instance. Like this. As long as you keep trying to sing connected in your brain, uh, I think things will grow. Maybe in the beginning uh, it doesn't work right away, but as long as you keep trying to, to sing the right quality in the brain, uh, the MSU will go along. So it's really connected always to singing what you do. Yeah. 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 I love that approach. Like like you say, with the breathing, with the articulation, with the sound, with, with everything, always connect to the singing, right? Yeah. And to the to the to the natural way of speaking, basically. Exactly. And and you know, I think probably for for you it's the same, Martin. If I if I if I go from the pedal C to the normal low C, I always have two different amateur switches, right? If I I don't know if if I go close to the camera, is that close to? Boom. Yes. Maybe you can you can see. Oh, should you do it again? Could you see? Yes. So so that's that's the uh, with, with most people you know if you're really trying to uh, to be very much be aware of where your your shifting positions are you will you will get locked in with them. Right, but I really try to overthink them, yeah, to, to overthink over these over these breaking points. Oh, like this. So right, and this, yeah. So so rather than focusing on your ambush, you you're more focused on the singing, about how you yeah. want to make it sound, about finding uh, a, a relaxed way as possible of breathing, about yes. all of these kind of things. Exactly, and then you can, you know, then you can design. I think, I think it's a, I think that's a very important message because I think a lot yeah. of students often get lost in focusing so much on their ambusure, right? Yeah. And of course, yeah. there are certain instances that someone needs to really work on on their ambusure in order to 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 have the most efficient way of playing, but. For for me, it's the same. The, all of these things you just mentioned are so much more important yeah. than focusing on what's happening here, right? Yeah. Well, and, and besides, you know, it makes me a bit more happy, a happy person as well. Yeah. <laughs> because you know, if, if you think like the differences of one day or the other, how how the lips feel, right? That's sometimes so huge. Yeah. And and if you give in to this, you know, you 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 get a little. I was like that, you know, I was very neurotic, like if my lips will be a little bit dry or whatever, like, oh man, now I cannot play. And, and, and this is, I think, the, one of the greatest lessons that, that uh, Rex Martin taught me through, you know, through the, the philosophy of Jacobs, that you can actually make, make the lips buzz and vibrate pretty easy, although they feel strange. Yeah. And, and as you can understand, if you really, on a daily basis, work, work on, on this with the amateur, this gives gives your confident confidence in you know auditions or like in our case uh, difficult concerts, yeah. right? Yeah, when you go in like, so yeah, sorry. No, no, it's it's that, that's a that's a great point. Like people always ask me, okay, you're switching all the time between tenor and bass, or like on other instruments, of course, uh, trumpet players they switch around all the time, like on different trumpets, on different yeah. mouthpieces. They say, how yeah. do you do that? <laughs> My answer is like. Basically, you have to get used to be never in shape again. <laughs> well, sure. So yeah. it doesn't matter how bad it feels. All of the things you just mentioned, breathing, uh, uh, singing, uh, um, uh, sound, focus to the natural speeds are all so much more important than actually focusing too much on how it feels. Like, I mean, you know, with, with tours, sometimes we don't see our instruments for three days. And suddenly you exactly. sit in a concert hall with two and a half thousand people and you have to play what you have to play. And people pay a lot of money to hear the best quality. Even yeah. sometimes you feel so bad because of whatever circumstances, because of travel. Yeah. But no, that's that's I think that's a great that's a great that's a great point. I have another yeah. question. Yeah. Um someone asked when you play the fountains excerpt. Yeah. How do you connect really the, the the pedal tones to the other register and, and and get them really clean coming back to the pedals? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe just <laughs> maybe just one thing. 
Yeah. I think we can continue for a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap it no. up like in, in like 10 minutes. So yeah. everybody, um, first of all, tell us from where you're watching. Second of all, if you still have any question, post them here or here or here. I don't know exactly where it is in your window. And take a screenshot also and please post it on your social media channels. Tag us, tag our YouTube channel, tag our personal accounts or the the, the brass of the Concertgebouw Orchestra uh, um, YouTube page because we will be doing this more. So we would be happy if more people would join the next time. Anyway, so post your <laughs> questions, let us know from where you're watching. And now we continue to the Respigi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, well, uh, also with this, with this excerpt begins with, with getting rid of a, a low E. It's, it's, it's low, it's a low note, you know. It's, I think you should, you should look at it as a, as a middle register note on a tuba, right? Same here. I, first of all, when I when I work on this exercise uh, excerpt, then I try to horizontalize my airflow, right? So I'm uh, if I if I air imitate this, yeah. So you, first of all, you make the air easy. Our reflex is to, to really to kick in the body into this low E. And then actually what happens, it backfires. Yeah. So so it probably will close. So it's extremely important to have this, this very open image. And I really try to have this throughout the whole lecture, this the same openness of, of, of embouchure. Yeah? sound man <laughs> yeah. that's nice yeah, I hope this helps a bit Martin no that's awesome that's great just to hear you play this already enough you know <laughs> <laughs> that's nice well, I get a lot of questions in here oh. and people are watching from really all over I see again Mexico United States Brazil oh, man. Chile Belgium UK Japan South Korea Taiwan Thailand yeah. Maren. The Netherlands, Maren. I saw also Friesland. Welcome, Omar <laughs> Tomasoni. <laughs> oh, so many, so many. That's great. That's nice. So, let's do two more questions. Okay. Before we wrap it uh, wrap it up. Um, yeah. yeah. When you have to play F tuba. Yes. How do you? Someone asked. How do you um, uh, divide? the practice time between the, the C tuba and uh, the F tuba? Because you mostly play F, right? Not E flat. Uh, I don't play E flat, right. Yeah, yeah I used to, used to but um, yeah, so the thing that I'm, I'm having here is that that's the Hirschbrunner York C tuba with the playable, and then, you know, here's the, uh, the, the Adams F. That's a right? new one, no? That's your model. Yeah, yeah. So this is a this is a copy of of the the Hirschbrunner F tuba, which is now being uh, built by the Adams Company, which is a really great instrument, and it's uh, you know it's it's equal to the old Hirschbrunner kind of quality, and maybe even better. And and right? you help develop it, no, from the from the start. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and, but you know they did a great job, uh, and we we did a lot of research, and um, and we did a lot of experimenting, you know, and trying and. and uh, Finding the right thickness of the material and, and you know all the lengths and yeah so this is a great job I just on this one I, I played last year I played the von the von Wiering uh, tuba concerto remember which then I just 
got this instrument like only one month before. That's right. Yeah, but I, I you know, it's, but it's so easy to play and, and so not such a nice instrument. When is that? When is that recording coming out of the Fogon Williams? Uh, um, it was supposed to be out in spring, which is I don't know. I don't know if it's spring yet. <laughs> well, it's spring, but I guess people are busy with other things now. So. That's, that's the point, and uh, <coughs> it will be out. Uh, so as soon as as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah. First, a uh, digital release. Nice. Uh, uh, and because it's going to be uh, appearing on a CD with uh, with uh, our colleagues with uh, Pete with Omar and out by Henry. I don't know what the other ones are, but the really really nice CD. But that's going to be later in uh, in autumn or something. But the digital release, I hope you know. But things are look look a bit different now. That's nice. Uh, so <coughs> in in terms of practicing uh, if you if you have been playing the c tuba for a long time and like the f tuba is coming up would you practice more f tuba than c tuba or do you always keep c tuba your main instrument no it's uh, no i i don't i don't w i don't look look at the both instruments like either one of the two is my main instrument okay so uh, so in this case it's it's really uh, if i can if i have time on the daily basis i, I just try to mix them up and in the beginning, you know, years ago, that it was sometimes troublesome, but now it's actually it's a challenge to, um, you know, if you if you go in with the same thought that we that we have been talking about for the last hour, then it's actually um, not so difficult anymore. You know, you know, you have your specific things that that you have on your on your instrument, but um, but you know because these are high quality instruments and they will just. They will do the work, you know, if you just put the right feel and the right thoughts in. So the F2 will never sound like a C2 and vice versa. Uh, yeah, and, and actually that's also a note is when I have to, to move uh, quickly to the Chimbasso, which I'm not playing so much because we don't do so many operas, but when I do, I try to go in with the same mindset, you know, just to think of the pitch and the vowel and the quality of airflow, <clears throat> and then the instrument will, will do much more of the work. So would you right? say, no. I mean, that was one of the hardest things after being a tenor player, tenor trombone player my whole life, switching to bass trombone was, how do I actually sound on bass trombone? What's my sound? So yeah. you really consciously make the change when you actually take another instrument of, of, of your uh, sound imagination. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, although, I, yeah. Although I sometimes, you know, uh, use a little bit if I if I want to improve a bit on my the quality of sound on the F tuba, sometimes I actually use an imaginary uh, sound from the York, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, to to sound a little bit more relaxed. And and I even do it the other way around when I when I'm practicing on the C tuba, I take I take the B flat kind of sound for the you know, but just it's imaginary sound, right? Yeah, yeah, that's and interesting. It's helpful to 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 improve on the quality a bit. But main thing, it's again focused on singing, <coughs> yeah. breathing, sound imagination. That's much more important to than to focus on making any changes uh, in your embouchure, let's say. Yeah, yeah because uh, changing to another instrument, uh, it, 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 uh, it's very tricky to, uh, that you, go, you, you give in to the, to the feeling of the instrument and how it feels differently, right? And then you forget to, to send the right signal to your embouchure and to blow right like this all right nice I, I have one actually two more questions one is an, <laughs> you had already two more questions <laughs> like 10 minutes ago <laughs> no, but there are so many coming in like i have to make a good selection two two really the last of the last of the last all right um someone asked when you have a tour coming up so just explaining both of us obviously we are playing in the concertgebouw orchestra the concertgebouw orchestra and I think we tour around like maybe 50 or 55 days a season usually. And every season we have a long tour either to Asia or to United States or sometimes both. And of course, especially a tuba, it doesn't travel with us in the plane. It, it goes in the cargo. And yeah. it can happen that because of customs or travel delay that sometimes we don't see our instrument for two or three days or just because of traveling or jet lag, you didn't sleep for a couple of days. So the circumstances on tours can be much more difficult than, let's say, when you're at home and you have your usual routine. So yeah. do you do something in particular to pre prepare for this or 
Um, what do you do to actually keep the shape when you don't have your instrument on tour? Or is it more mentally or do you really practice your instrument uh, in advance before we actually start the tour so you are actually more in shape than you need, yeah. let's say? Well, to begin with, you know, I have the luxury also, you know, through the through the orchestra that I so you, so you see the set we've just been talking about. I have an ex exact double set, so you you see it there in the uh, where is there in the corner there there's the second F, right, <clears throat> and then the, the other C tuba is uh, is in the house. <laughs> so uh, so I have already double set. So for the for the first days that we're still at home before we go. I really try to do extra work, you know, and really a lot of basics. So uh, ju just just to make it clear, when the uh, when the instruments are already on transport before <coughs> we yeah. leave ourselves, let's say. Sorry. Well. So so the, the in case when the instruments are already on the way to the location, yeah. yeah. But we didn't travel ourselves yet, so that that it can mean that you are at home for a day or two without any instrument because the instrument is already being transported to to the location. Yeah, but I have my double set in the yeah, home, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and of course, and then we go travel, and then and then it's you know if I have to wait until my instruments are are given out, no, and well, our stage crew of the concert bar, they are great guys, and yes. they, they always know that <laughs> that I will be one of the first, you know, just jumping up and down in front of the <laughs> the transport vehicle to get my instrument, right, and. Uh, but you know, and then, but sometimes, as you know, there's sometimes like one day or two days where you, you because then the instruments are still in uh, how do you say it, in customs. Uh, so I'm, I just have to I have to do it with the buzzing. So you know, therefore, for me, it's it's, it's not a discussion at all to buzz yes or no because I I need to right. That's the only thing you have. Yeah, that's the only thing I have, and uh, I, I see this travel to bus, um, which for me is. You mean like the the, the, the very yeah. yeah compact one? Exactly, but for me this is actually um, it just doesn't give really anything extra for me. So I can I can do my main things with the buzzing and, and getting into the right shape. Uh, you know, and then I I have to be honest when then when I go in on the day when I get my instrument I have I have my set of you know I go a bit more extreme in in certain exercises. Okay. Uh, but this is this is experience. Uh, with some exercise where I just know, okay, now I go a bit more extreme, you know, either in, 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 the, cr in the crescendo, decrescendo exercises, the loudness, the, the slurrings once, so really go practice very intensely, take a very, very good rest, and, you know, hopefully I'm ready uh, in, for that evening concert or whatever, yeah. And then it actually connects to the, to the things we have been talking about in the last hour. Yeah. Like not focusing too much on how you feel, but rather focusing on sound, singing, and exactly. breathing, right? Yeah, That's yeah. And this gives confidence as well, you know, that it will be all right at some point. Of course, experience also yeah. plays a big part. Then the last question. Last question! <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we could go on for like a couple of hours because there are so many questions coming in through YouTube and Facebook. So, I mean, this has been a lot of fun, and I think. We should no, do it. We should do it again and keep doing it. Still, there are like all together like more than 400 people watching. So I think that's great. You're doing a great job, Martin. You can become a television host. <laughs> gives you something to do during these days, no? no yeah. I, I found it a very interesting question. Like yeah. being where you are now, what would be the number one advice that you would give to a 20-year-old Perry Hogendijk? <laughs> yeah. In terms of you uh, practicing and and, uh, and playing, let's say. Yeah, and, and, and don't have in regard that we are in, in a corona crisis. So let's say we're, we're, we would have normal times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, if you're 20 years old, you know, I would definitely, uh, because the world has become so small, well, before we got into the crisis, we have to see if we get out. But first of all, you have to go and, and uh, meet all great teachers, you know, all, all great books and, and, and music is around. Everything is, is, is one, one finger click away from you. So there's so much to learn, you know, everything is so close, but, but you have to be very much involved and, and 
you have to uh, you have to build up your um, the quality of your of your musical mind, right, as much as you can. So listen to high quality tuba players, but even more important, I would say, listen to high quality music, uh, whatever, violin, flute, uh, symphony orchestras, the best you can listen to, because you're really feeding your brain with 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 doing that. So I think that's ex extremely important. And then you know the competition is huge these days, right? So there's there's no time to lose if you if you want to if you want to win a job in an orchestra, um, and then you know and so if you want to focus on this becoming an orchestra player, then you should have full focus on doing this and uh, you know trying to understand what it what it takes to win an audition, which is kind of a competitive thing, right? But at the same time, you should really consider. Being creative with all kinds of projects, you know. If I, if I look at my students, they are super creative with with doing projects with with electronics or combining dance or theater or, or whatever. Uh, so so uh, you know, or maybe even you know something that I never never had a chance to 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 work on is like uh, have some jazz uh, experience, you know. Yeah. Getting so I think you need to be flexible these days, even even more. Than in the times that I was a young student. Yeah. Well, do you want that's to, it? Do you want to end up with playing something for everybody that's watching? <laughs> Sorry for putting you on the spot. But <laughs> I, 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 well, I think I played a lot, no? no that's true. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm done. I think it was. Good, good, great. So, I mean, that was a question that I saw coming a couple of times, is why I asked. No, great, nice. So, I think we can tell to everyone, be healthy, stay healthy, yeah. stay inside during these difficult times. Yeah. And um, well, we will try to do this more. The plan is to have uh, every brass player of the section of the Concertgebouw Orchestra do a live stream. And um, again, take a screenshot, share it with your friends. So that next time we even, we have even more people watching. It's great to see that people are really watching from everywhere, like from the far east to the far west. <laughs> <laughs> great man. That's great. Perry, uh, Martin, thank you very much for uh, for inviting me and organizing this the technical part of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You should see my screen, it's like, <laughs> no. I have more stress than when I have to play, you know. <laughs> it's impressive, man, and it's nice to see you. It's really, uh, well, yeah. nice to see you and especially to hear you. I miss that sound, man. <laughs> don't worry, man. Let's, uh, let's hope we don't have to wait too long to play together again. We're just going to play all Marvel symphonies in June. What, what about that? Yeah. Let's see, <laughs> let's see. Let's see, let's see what we'll give. Thanks, man. Okay, you too. Take care. Yeah. See Bye, you. everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Bye bye. Great job. <laughs> Don't forget to share. <laughs> Ciao.